So today we're taking a look at the Satsuma. This is one of the best uh, legendary super ships in this game. And the reason really does come down to its ability. And as a battleship player, really accuracy is everything. Having good dispersion just allows you to have a much bigger impact on the game. The Hanover can be fun, but I've had a lot of issues with getting it to work just because of aircraft carriers, really. Uh, I've been killed very, very quickly a couple times that I've actually tried to brawl in it. So I decided to take the Satsuma out, and this is my very first match in it. And it went very well. <laughs> we start off by taking a bunch of damage to start with, but that's okay. We'll just call it a adrenaline rush buff and get ourselves a little bit faster of a reload. So with the Satsuma, you get eight 510 millimeter guns, right? Just absolutely gigantic, the amount of damage that you can put out. The dispersion's a little wonky. We're gonna see a lot of strange looking salvos every once in a while. And we're actually also gonna see a lot of shatters, which I was a little surprised about, but to be fair, it is pretty long range. And some of these ships have some pretty decent armor belts. So that's what we're gonna be shattering on, but Overall, we're gonna do a lot of damage. Of course, after three salvos, you're gonna activate its special ability, which of course is its improved dispersion on its fourth shot. So every four shots you're taking or salvos you're taking in this thing, you're getting some massively accurate salvos. And that is really, really, really fun to use. We'll show that off later on to a special Montana who's just sitting broadside. <laughs> But for now, we really do need to try and get some of these ships out that are in the middle of the open here. We've started off this game by just losing a Minotaur straight up, so we do have to come back here a little bit. You're going to notice that I just take my time here. I'm not going to push super hard. It's the nice thing about a ship like the Satsuma compared to a Hanover. You don't constantly feel like you're needing to get closer or feeling like you need to brawl <laughs> to make your ship or make use of all the tools your ship has on offer. The Satsuma really is just this insane damage dealer from mid to long range. Of course, it does all right at close range, but you do have to worry about the infamous Yamato cheek, right? It's still here on this ship, so you're not really going to be able to, uh, to do close range brawling, especially because a lot of ships in this game mode have 32 millimeters of overmatch, so going bow in isn't really going to work with this thing. That's uh, something about the meta that you're going to notice, that a lot of ships that are usually pretty good at tier 10 suddenly stop becoming so good. Ships like Thunderer, ships like Borgone, ships like, uh, well, Yamato is a reasonable example, but as soon as you add a ton of 32mm overmatch into the mix, a lot of these battleships suddenly become very squishy, very weak. So you're gonna notice actually Kerfirst gets a bit of a buff as far as uh, its viability in the uh, ranked meta, just because it's able to actually bounce these large caliber guns. So not saying that Kerfirst is better than a lot of those ships, obviously Thunderer, Borgone is gonna be much better at dealing damage, but at least for not taking massive 20K salvos at obscure angles, uh, it's gonna do a little better at that. So ships like Ohio, Montana, Definitely decent, but again, they have that little bit vulnerable bow and stern that is 32 millimeters as well. So just something to keep in mind, something to watch out for is 32 millimeters of armor isn't really enough in this ranked season, assuming people are actually running these legendary ships, right? Well, I haven't really seen too many of them recently or so far, but again, I haven't really played too much ranked. I think I'm at rank eight at this point, seven, something like that. I haven't played too many games yet, so we might see a few more of them in the future, but again, it is one day rentals, so people might not be able to play them super often, or when they do play them, they just decide to grind ranked hard that one day, so. Going broadside to a Satsuma, we actually didn't take too much damage this time, so it seems like we both are having difficulties uh, citadeling each other at these super duper long ranges, so that's a nice little th bonus for us that we get to live a little bit longer given that we just went broadside to a pretty scary ship. We've now activated our ability, or we've at least earned enough accurate salvos to uh, potentially activate our accurate ability, but I'm not gonna do it just yet. Occur first on low HP, I don't really wanna waste it on that. So as long as you're continuing to take shots at people, your ability isn't going to decay, right? If you stop shooting, if you stop getting shots on target, 
or at least within the vicinity, considering we just whiffed on a curve first somehow, uh, it's not going to decay. If you stop shooting for an extended period of time, you'll start to see this buff go away. However, this is what you save <laughs> this buff for. <laughs> you can see I popped the plane. If uh, you have longer range, you get slightly better dispersion. That was something that was data mined a little while ago. So popping a plane can help dispersion sometimes. It's not very much though. Keep that in mind. And we do get a two Citadel Salvo. And with this thing, that's a lot of damage. <laughs> so pretty satisfying. I certainly would love to have an activated ability like this in the main game. If all battleships could have this, please, thank you. Maybe not every four shots, but what if it was every six shots or eight shots or even 10 shots? What if I had to get 10 salvos on target and then I'd have this activated ability, huh? I think that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know. You guys know I'm not too big a fan of the randomness in this game, but it's nice to have at least every once in a while a pretty accurate salvo. Again, we're missing quite a lot on this curve for somehow, but he's going to go down eventually, hopefully. <laughs> but now the CV is starting to target us. I have been keeping an eye out for him, though. Don't think I haven't been. I see him back there on the uh, B3 island. I've been trying to see if I can get that cross shot, because, of course, the Satsuma has some pretty insane range, especially when it spotter planes up. You can see we pretty much cover the whole map, even from this this corner right so that's without range mod even we're running reload we're running accuracy the standard battleship build right where you're going for extra healing extra fire prevention and uh, of course you're wanting some concealments as well just to get those shots off without being permanently detected the entire time the curve first decides to use the border and well he turns broadside to shoot at us we'll finally get our good salvo in and kill him so that clears our flank nicely uh, I really did have to kill him there. You notice the Montana is about to get my broadside. Their Satsuma is still going after me. And of course the CV is coming. So it's very fortunate that we managed to kill him there. And look at that. We're already up to 216,000 damage. We're not done yet, but we're getting there here. And that is in a, what, 7v7 rank match? Uh, that's a lot of damage. Yes, there are a couple super ships, but really there was only the Satsuma. So we're doing a ton ton of damage given how few ships there are here. Uh, really trying to get our team a win in this one, that's for sure. Now of course the carrier has a field day on these super battleships just because you're so big and you turn even worse than a normal tier 10 battleship. So I'm going to be relying on my torpedo protection a lot of the time to help deal with some of these torpedoes. You can see that uh, a torp on our torp belt did 1800 damage and if it hits our nose it did around 4000. So Later on, we're going to get pretty close to dying, but the torpedo protection is going to save us just a little bit. I do have my ability available, but I'm not activating it yet, and that's just because it's a bow on Napoli. He has enough armor to bounce us in a lot of areas, so I'm really waiting to see if somebody's going to make a mistake and go broadside. And we barely got him with our back turret there. He just gave us enough broadside to <laughs> let us get a citadel there, so up to 250k as well as three kills. So I'm really hoping this Petro is going to make a mistake and go broadside to us. It's somewhat unlikely, especially now that the Kremlin has died, but uh, you never know what happens given that the CV might force him to turn to try and avoid some of those AP bombs. Hakuria, of course, has some of the most devastating AP bombs. They just, they just hit really hard, especially against cruisers. So he's going to try and avoid them. And you can see that's forcing him to turn broadside. It's these, it's these crossfires, man, that an aircraft carrier can set up wherever, man. It, it's, it's too strong, but it does allow us to get an incredibly accurate salvo into him. And the first two shells citadel him twice, and he detonates. But let's be honest, even without a detonation there, that man was going down. <laughs> um, something that uh, I probably shouldn't have on this build, but I actually do, is super heavy AP. I've been messing around with the, um, not the Yamato. Wow, I can't believe I forgot the name at this, at this point. The Shikishima. Oh my goodness, we're tired today. So the Shikishima, I've been messing around in arms race, trying to get the highest alpha damage possible. <laughs> I think I got up to like 26 or 28k alpha on the Shikishima. So it's pretty funny, but I actually didn't realize I had that commander still. So 
We're taking more fire damage in this one, but we're also dealing far more AP pen damage and citadel damage. So that uh, that Petro in those two shells took over 40k before he detonated. <laughs> not a build I'd recommend because the extra fire damage certainly is not worth it, but it's kind of fun to mess around with, especially in arms race. Now, of course, we just have the Satsuma and the enemy carrier to deal with. And we've got a destroyer left alive, so this should be a relatively easy win at this point, even though they're ahead in points, and we're about to go ahead in caps. So really not too much to worry about. Nearly 300k and four kills. A really, really solid game. And this Satsuma appears to be going broadside, so finally we can get a good shot into him. Hopefully get some of those citadels that we were shattering on earlier, right? That'd be quite nice. He gets a salvo back at us. Only his front turrets, though, so it shouldn't do too much. And we take 12k, and he takes 2,000. <laughs> uh, RNG is a good time, isn't it? It's really fun. At least the uh, aircraft carrier torpedoes don't have that annoying tendency to just miss or overpen. So we manage to take him out, or our team manages to take out the enemy Satsuma, and it's just the Immelman left. However, it is an Immelman, so it's possible he could win this game yet. <laughs> so I'm on really low health, caught broadside to his torpedo bombers. And like I said earlier, it's our torpedo protection that's really going to help us in this scenario. And I have to try and take all of them on the belt. And I nearly do. It's just one of them, I think, that hit me not on the torpedo protection. And since he's dark and gone behind an island, I'm probably not going to get another shot off, so I decide to activate my accurate ability and just try and go for a blind shot. You may as well at this point. So we need to live so that our team can catch up on points or stay ahead on points. Maybe it gives an opportunity for our gearing to get some torpedoes off on the Immelman and our Hakuryu to continue to spot, that kind of thing. I'm very confident I'm going to die at this point, but I'm pretty happy with 300k four kills. <laughs> a Kraken in 7v7 ranked would be pretty nice to add on top of that as well, but uh, I don't think that's going to happen since the Immelman's coming for us and he's behind an island. However, he sees our Hakuryu broadside and decides to go for him instead. So we are going to live for a little bit, but this could spell the death of our carrier. So for me, it's very important that I live at this point. It's very, very, very important. So our DD has enough time to hopefully kill the Immelman, or at least he has the opportunity to uh, keep him lit, force him out from behind the island and I can get a shot off. You can see our Hakuryu is about to flood to death. So this game is far from over since the enemy is now ahead of us on points still. A very, very, very close game, but now we're getting chased, or soon to be getting chased, by skip bombers. And I'm worried, so I decide to start turning out. You have to pre-plan your moves very quickly, very far in advance, but he recalls them. Why do you think he recalled them? Well, it's because our gearing got some spots off on him, so he knows that he was ship spotted, he was surface spotted. He recalls and is gonna go after the gearing now. So now I actually have to turn in and try and help kill this carrier before he kills our gearing. That's really important here. So even though we're on low HP and we should just run away and win, that would be the traditional advice. We actually have to get in range. So 27 kilometers, pretty easy to get in range. <laughs> but still, I was thinking about running towards the J1 area, but I have to turn back in, even though it's a risk. I do have to turn back in. The first torps from the gearing do actually miss, so we need to try and get a decent shot out, but this is behind islands. We're kind of aiming with the minimap here, honestly, so we're not really confident in this salvo, but I think it's actually going to do all right. He's angled at 40 degrees, 43 degrees. These should be a bunch of full pens, potentially even citadels, and we bounce twice off his deck armor and get one full pen. <laughs> You can see how frustrating the dispersion is on this thing, even though we have such a massive game. But uh, the next salvo is nice and accurate. However, the gearing torps will finish him off. Satsuma is a great ship if you're looking to play battleships in ranked. It's really, really, really strong. Definitely recommend. I'm gonna have to play the Hanover a little bit more. It's a little bit tricky to get working <laughs> since there's a lot of aircraft carriers. But for now, Satsuma is awesome and a ton of fun to play. So like I said, the build on this ship is not one I'd recommend. <laughs> I've been just messing around with heavy AP. But I would say it's almost there. 
If you swapped heavy AP over for basics of survivability, I think you're looking at a pretty solid build. Maybe not an emergency repair specialist, but you can really pick whatever you want to here. Maybe the uh, preventive maintenance would help, although the guns probably aren't going to get taken out. That's pretty much the right build, I'd say, outside of Super Heavy AP. <laughs> Just kind of messing around with that. But if you're wondering, that does give you the 20,855 alpha. So yeah, that <laughs> Petro was definitely dead. <laughs> and now for the equipment, also pretty standard, I'd say. Um, reload, concealment. Honestly, you could go with any of these three. Just don't take airstrikes since, you know, there's no DDs, or there's no submarines, sorry. Not really much point in taking that, so. Aiming systems mod 1, and then of course damage control and main armaments. Pretty standard build. It's just a standard battleship just at the super tier, right? So, really a good ship to play if you're looking to grind out ranked as a battleship player. The Hanover, I think, is going to be a little bit harder to use, but that's just based on my initial couple of games in it. I think the Satsuma is just pretty easy to make use of since it excels at long to medium range and that's generally where you're going to be playing your battleships so thank you very much for watching and hope you have a great rest of your day